meadows. During Tanabray services, we commemorate the deepening of the sky portrayed by the gospel writers at the hour of Jesus' death. In a wider context, we remember how the story of Christ's betrayal, denial, abandonment, beating, mocking, and execution is a story filled with symbolic shadows as well. It is a story into which we are thrown, often in the roles of the many characters who interact with Jesus. Tonight, we will share readings from all four Gospels and a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Following each reading, the reader will extinguish a candle, symbolic of the coming gloom. We will respond to each reading with hymn verses that are printed in the program. Please listen and respond as a seeker looking to discover yourself within the story. At the conclusion of this service, there is neither benediction nor postlude. Instead, we leave quietly and solemnly, mindful that the story is not complete, but will continue on the third day, Easter Sunday morning, with the new dawn of Christ's resurrection, when the light of God's renewing love will burn away all the shadows. Judas, slave of jealousy, where are you? I am here. Peter, slave of fear, where are you? I am here. Thomas, slave of doubt, where are you? I am here. Pilate, slave of expediency, where are you? I am here. Herod, Slave of skepticism, where are you? I am here. Men and women of Jerusalem enslaved by mob rule, where are you? O Lord, have mercy. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death 
remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss in the mouth will be the man. Arrest him. At once he came upon Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on a sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into your place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not think that I cannot appeal to my father who will at once send down more than 12 legions of angels. But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
they took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, this man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. Then about an hour later, yet another kept insisting, surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly.
When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went out and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. <clears throat> Then they fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. 
Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this reason I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching them throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been waiting, waiting and wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death.
Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood, see to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole shouted, his blood be on us and on our children. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, hail king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed. They spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him.
Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. As they had led, led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. And they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wound, wood is green, what will happen when it is dry?
others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on the right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do, know not, do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise.
When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Struggling up the hill, I think I heard him say, Take my mother home. Then I'll die easy. Take my mother home. Then I'll die easy.
when it was noon. Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, when some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling on Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood there facing him saw that he had died in this way, that he had breathed his last, the centurion said, truly, this was God's son. God, the Father in heaven. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Be gracious to us. Spare us, the Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. O Christ, hear us. In mercy, hear us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung the Savior of the whole world. Oh, come, let us worship him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. <laughs> 